So now we are transitioning to the molecular uh, biology part of this course. So this chapter we are going to talk about discovery of DNA as the genetic material in the first part. Okay. When Gregor Mendel described about patterns of inheritance and unit of inheritance as the gene, he did not fully understand what genes were made up of. So there were two major contenders for genes, either proteins or DNA. The reason being that proteins are very diverse with 20 different amino acids and they can code for the variations that we find in nature. And DNA is just four bases, but only thing is that every cell contains DNA. And when the cells divide, like in mitosis or meiosis, they split the chromosome, they separate into part with equal amount of chromosome. So there's something to do with the DNA along with the proteins that go with the DNA in the case of eukaryotic cell. So the result of the experiments were done uh, is mainly to reveal what is the genetic material. So when you go through this result, it is critical for you to understand why they did this, what they did or how they did, and what was the conclusion? Well, how can you infer from this? So the experiments also revolved around the First World War time when they were looking at pathogenic bacteria and non-pathogenic bacteria, and around Second World War time where there was enough radioactive material available. So the, the first experiment about pathogenic materia transferring a DNA or DNA-like genetic material at the time to a non-pathogenic bacteria to cause a disease was almost forgotten until radioisotopes were available later on or the techniques were available later on to isolate DNA or RNA and use different enzymes to prove it was the DNA as a genetic material. So you will find that scientists using sulfur or phosphorus to deduce that it was the DNA that is a genetic material. Once that was proven, the race was on to discover the true nature and structure of DNA that would explain how DNA can serve as a genetic material. As a genetic material, the DNA has to do two things. One, it has to store information. Two, it should be able to replicate. So these two functions need to be described in the structure. Okay? So the, uh, the best structure was elucidated are deduced by James Watson and Francis Crick based on the X-ray image of Rosalind Franklin. So at that time, they were working on in London, and when they saw the X-ray image by Rosalind Franklin, they were able to come up with the idea that DNA is like a double helix, and there are nitrogenous bases like A and T, and G and C, they pair with each other through hydrogen bonding, and ribose phosphate backbone is what is holding them together. So that structure was able to tell that the DNA can store information in its base sequence like G, A, T, C, and so on. Also, it showed that because of these base pairing rules, it was also shown by uh, Erwin Shergoff before that G is equal to C, A is equal to T was the basis of like complementary base pairing which is important for the replication process. So when the DNA is separate in two, you can use the complementary base pairing principle to replicate. So it was a successful demonstration by building models based on an experimental evidence. They showed that DNA structure is a double helix. But once they showed that, they had to also explain how the DNA could replicate and how the DNA could make protein. So there was another proposal by Francis Crick that the DNA serves as a genetic material and as a template to make RNA. Not only it copies DNA, but also make RNA, which is used to make protein. So the DNA makes RNA, makes protein was also proposed at that time by Francis Crick, later on proven by many other scientists. The next part of the chapter talks about the replication of DNA. So in understanding the replication of DNA, you have to understand the process is called a semi-conservative. So semi-conservative means that when the DNA double strand going in opposite direction, separate into two, 
that one strand is an old strand and a new strand is made on that strand is half old, half new is what is called as semi-conservative. So understand the principle behind their experiment, how they proved this semi-conservative. Then get into the process of DNA replication itself. So that when the DNA replication starts, it starts in a place called center of well, origin of replication where the the DNA opens up like a bubble and then it starts to replicate on both direction or bi-directional replication. So understand what enzymes are involved, what each one of those enzymes do, it is very critical. And the next part of the chapter, that's the last one, covers the DNA repair mechanisms. So the DNA must be repaired if there's a mistake in DNA replication process or if the DNA is damaged by ultraviolet rays or some chemicals, it needs to be repaired. So that is the repair mechanism, either mismatch or excision or telomere repair. So all, they all happen during either DNA replication or after DNA replication. So in this chapter, focus on understanding the principles behind the experiment, the results, how did they come up with these results, and what if we change something in that experiment, how can you predict what result they would expect. Then, Understand the structure of DNA is very important and the replication process is also very important. So in the next chapter, we are going to transition to how DNA can serve as a template to make RNA and to make protein.